All right, guys, I'm gonna teach y'all how to wheelie today. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. Right now I am on a 2017 DRZ, or Z for you overseas motherfuckers, 400 Supermoto. I have got stock tires, stock rear sprocket, the only thing that I've changed on this bike, uh, any sort of performance wise, is I went up one tooth and one tooth only on the front sprocket. Now, that and I, you know, made it to where my exhaust shoots out flames, let me show you all that shit real quick. Pretty fucking cool, if, you, if I do say so myself. So yeah, anyway, uh, first things first, when you hop on your bike, get in a good position. You want your handlebars to be as comfortable as possible, adjust those to your liking, you know, fiddle around with how you have your, your brake pedal set up, you know, how far down or how high up you like it, same thing with your shift linkages. Now for this video only, we're only going to be staying in first gear. Now first gear, one thing to remember is that it's really torquey, so the first thing you want to work on is, after you let out the clutch, Work on holding your throttle still. You don't want to be chopping it back and forth, worrying about, you know, if you're gonna loop or anything like that. Cause what we're about to do, you're not gonna loop. First things first. And since I only went up one tooth on the front sprocket, yes, there's a speed difference, but in first gear, it's gonna be very, very minimal. I think it's like maybe five to 6% difference, maybe seven. So we're gonna get moving here about 10 miles an hour, and then we're just gonna rev it up, let out. You're not gonna floor it, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in your revs about just just where you know it engages a little past you know idle. You know the amount of play that your that your uh, throttle has. You want to go that distance from all the way forward, take out the play, and then. Go that same distance back one more time. And that, that'll get you used to the, to the jerk. Now, once you've gotten used to the jerk and you've done that a couple of times, you know, you're, you're getting used to it slowly but surely. You're gonna give it a little bit more throttle, just, just a cut tear at a time. And then you begin to feel the front end come up. Now, Notice, whenever I let off, my throttle stays still. I'm not, I'm not twisting it or popping it. You don't want to do that. Because what that does is that puts a lot of strain on your chain, on your engine, and your wrist. You're going to get arm pumped like a son of a bitch from trying to, you know, do that. So what you're going to end up doing is you're going you're gonna to slowly start to find your sweet spot. Now, once you get your sweet spot, which is right about here for me, feel it come up and then you're gonna feel it start getting lighter you're gonna feel yourself and the bike getting to your center point now at that point what you're gonna end up doing and remember anytime you're doing wheelies always have your foot hovering over the rear brake the way that I learned the best was whenever I first started doing wheelies was I would actually have the brake already pre-applied just a little bit and then I come up now once you get up you're gonna start finding your sweet spot. Now before you get to balance point, the main thing that you need to work on, before you ever focus on holding your wheelie, is whenever you come up, you wanna bring the bike down on your command with the rear brake, not the throttle. Use the rear brake to bring it down on your command, not the bikes. So we're gonna go up. Brake. Now I'm not mashing on it. You know, you can even begin to do a little bit of brake work so that way you can understand the power of your rear brake even when you're only getting baby wheelies in like this brake now i'm gonna do the same thing with no brake and you'll see how much higher i get see i had to actually engage the brake to keep from looping that little amount you're gonna get so comfortable with your brake it's it's gonna seem like it's always been part of you riding motorcycles now this is not something you're gonna pick up in one day now granted you can do it don't get me wrong but you're not gonna get really good at it in one day you might be able to get to where you can hold a wheelie for a little bit but the main thing that you want to understand is that doing a proper wheelie is not bringing the bike up and then back down that's technically what a wheelie is 
But the true fundamentals of a wheelie is bringing the bike up on your command and under your control, keeping the wheelie as long as you tell the bike to, and then bringing the bike down on your command. The motorcycle should never rev out or under rev or anything like that. You should be in total control the whole time. The bike is your bitch. That's the key thing to remember. So here's what we're gonna do now. Now that we've gotten the, the fundamentals of foot brake work down and you're beginning to feel more comfortable, you're gonna start actually not holding balance point. We're gonna start going past balance point now. And what this is gonna do, this is not gonna be a wheelie that you ride out. It's gonna be a wheelie that you bring back you go past balance point and as soon as you do you're gonna bring it back down gently work on your rear brake control you never want to overdo it the moment you overdo it you're gonna slap your tank and you're probably gonna go over the handlebars so you want to start off low and start off easy so here we go bring it up the throttle work the brake i'm not changing my throttle at all all i'm doing is, is i'm applying more and less brake now it's gonna seem a little intimidating at first because the first thing that happens whenever you think about rear brake on a motorcycle is this. You're gonna lock it up. When you're on a motorcycle and you're doing a wheelie, I'm sure a lot of y'all know, 70 to 75, sometimes even 80 depending on the bike. 70 to 85% of your braking power comes off your front brake. Now the reason why that is and the reason why it will not lock up nearly as fast as your rear does is because as you brake and go forward, the bike's weight gets rotated on top of the tire. Now, not all the weight will get rotated on the tire. You're always gonna have some on the rear, unless you're doing an endo. Now, whenever you're doing a wheelie, 100% of the weight is on the rear tire. You will not lock it up. Before you ever lock up their rear brake doing a wheelie, you will slap the shit out of the ground your fucking helmet will get stuck to your handlebars and you're gonna look like a complete jackass. So now, let's go back, we'll line up, and then we're gonna start working on our foot brake again. There's gonna be a moment whenever everything about wheeling finally clicks with you and it's gonna be the greatest aha moment of your life. Now watch, watch my wrist. Steady throttle. Foot brake only. the revs out there a little bit just because I wanted to show y'all. Once you get comfortable with it, we're going to start, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're all going past balance points. So we're going to go past it. All right, now watch. See, I barely, I, I barely overdid the brake that time and it kind of popped me up out of my seat. Do not be afraid if that happens. Don't just put your legs out and try to catch yourself. Always have your foot over the brake. If you ever go past balance point, the brake is the only thing that's gonna save your ass. So once you get comfortable with getting to balance point and just, just teasing, a little bit of foreplay on past balance point, that's when you're gonna be able to get comfortable with balance point only. Because if you start and only go to balance point and only work on getting to balance point, you're gonna be so terrified once you go past it, you're gonna freak out. You're not gonna know what to do. So a little bit of throttle and hold steady. Break. Just a little bit of break. And then that's the wheelie, guys. It took me probably about three or four days to uh, of nonstop practice to get as comfortable and as familiar with wheeling as I am right now. Um, different bikes are gonna have different gearing ratios and different torque specs and things like that so whenever i do shifts during my wheelies i'll ride them out i've worked on them myself now the first thing that i can tell you is that if you ever decide that you're going to want to try shifting during a wheelie unfortunately the best and only safe way to ever do that is you have to start from back from ground zero you're going to start getting the bike up real low and then all you're going to do is blip the throttle down and back on as you're shifting up so I'll show you what that looks like. So we come around, we get lined up, we found our line, and then we're gonna come up, shift, oh, not, I forgot we were shifting. Hang on guys, my bad, my bad. All right, here we go. A little bit of throttle, 
Oh, wheel spin. A little bit of throttle. Yep. You see, just that little bit was enough. Even though this is only a 400, it's not insanely torquey like these 1,000 cc's, even 600 cc monsters are. So you got to get low with it. And then remember, foot over the brake. Always. That's the key thing. Now let's say you have a bike where first gear is real, real slow. Like it's all torque, no speed. If that's the case, then you can you can start out in second like I am now and just power, and, and not power up, but clutch up just a little bit. Now notice I'm not revving the shit out of it even in second gear. Just... And, and to me, second gear is a really, really comfortable speed. The bike's real stable. It's not really like wobbly or anything like that, but it's also not so fast to where I feel like you know, a gust of wind or anything that puts me off course can, you know, just totally toss me off the bike. So anyway, once you get done with your practicing, after about three to four days, you should most definitely be able to do this, no problem. See this red line that I'm on right now? This is a big ass shipping container building. I'm gonna stay in first gear, and I'm gonna ride it all the way across. First gear only, and I'm gonna be controlling my speed. notice that I'm kind of leaning off the bike every now and then once you're up in the air even your first time it's gonna feel completely natural because you're the way your balance is on the bike and the way you position your body weight and the bikes weight even with the handlebars it's gonna seem so so like natural don't worry about it it's not something that you have to work on or anything like that you can bring it up you know, even turn the wheel balance point and you can hold it back there that's how you slow down during a wheelie same you know and the opposite is also true if you stay in front of balance point you're gonna be speeding up balance point everybody thinks that it's like a direct solid degree but honestly balance point on a motorcycle because you have to calculate wind drag and things like that it's probably got a bit of about five degrees of play so you don't really have to worry about holding one specific spot you know you don't have to worry about being so delicate so touchy on the throttle and brakes that you know you're worried you're gonna speed up slow down speed up slow down it's it's very very easy to do now if you're on let's say like a big cruiser or things like that you're gonna have to pump the shit out of the front end because those things are heavy all the weight is towards the back or i'm sorry all the weight is on the front and you need to put all your weight on the back in order to pop the damn thing up Cruisers are a whole different ball game, and unfortunately, I don't know enough about it to give any good advice on them. You're gonna find videos online of guys ripping Harley Sportsters, like straight 12 o'clock, dragging their arm behind them, one-hander, no-hander. I mean, those guys are fucking ridiculous, but they've been doing it. They've been in the game for a long, long time. You know, they started out on something like this, a DRZ, or they started out on a 636, or you know, uh, a 250 or things like that. That's how you get into this. Another thing, be prepared to drop your bike. If you don't think, like, if you think that you can come out here and listen to any video, including mine, and, you know, not drop your bike because you've been doing it by the book, bullshit. You're gonna drop your bike at least once. And realistically, probably about 10 times before you ever really get it down. That's another reason why I tell you to start out in first gear because speed in a wheelie whenever it gets out of control is a lot more dangerous than speed on two wheels when it gets out of control because on a wheelie you can end up coming back too far and the bike will land on top of you or you can end up slamming like i did whenever you hit the brake too hard and if you're not careful and you slam on the brake and the bike pushes you down and mouse traps you you'll go down your collarbone will hit here and your other side of your collarbones here and then it'll become like this and then you'll end up with this hey ronald's live what's he at i don't know some bridge oh i know exactly where he's at you want to go meet him yeah fuck yeah let's get it let's get it tell him that we're on our way that's here in waco yeah oh shit dude hold on
Yeah, I gotta get my shit. Anyway, guys, that's Wheeling 101 with 1110 Moto. Please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know if I've told you this or not, but at the end of the month, I'm gonna be doing a drawing from all my subscribers and giving a $100 Visa gift card away. So feel free to subscribe. It's not gonna cost you anything, and you'll always get updated with the latest news on 1110 Mode if you click that bell icon. So guys, thank you very much. We've been riding today with Fatty McGee and Retard McGee. Just kidding. <laughs> These guys are awesome. Later. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Nothing can stop me, I'm all the way.